This is a cannabis infused beer that I made right here at home using this awesome book and some advice from the author, Dr. Keith Villa. In this video, I'll walk you through the process and at the end, we'll taste the result and see how it turned out. Now, let's make some beer. The first step is called the mash, where we'll essentially use water to extract sugars and other compounds from the grain. For this three and a half gallon batch, I'm starting with five gallons of reverse osmosis water and I'm adding some gypsum, calcium chloride, Epsom salt, and canning salt to match the hoppy New England IPA water profile in Brewfather. If you don't know what that means, I just use five gallons of some good quality spring water. Once the water is in the kettle, we're heating to a strike temperature of about 167 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 Celsius. For the grain bill, I'm going with two pounds of golden promise malt, one pound of golden naked oats, and half a pound of dextrin malt, and I'm aiming for an original gravity of about 1022. Now that the water is up to 167 Fahrenheit or 75 Celsius, I'll cut the heat and add the grains. Once the grains are nice and saturated, I'll set the target temperature to 158 Fahrenheit or 70 Celsius and recirculate the wort through the grain bed for at least 30 minutes. The basket on the inside of the kettle will make it super easy for me to separate the grains from the liquid, but if you don't have something like this, you can use a fabric grain bag and simply stir the mash during this step of the process. After 30 minutes, we can yank these grains and get our boil started. With the grains suspended over the kettle, I'm rinsing them with water until I've collected just shy of five gallons total volume. The second step in this process is the boil, and this is typically when you'd start adding hops. In this case, we'll start with boiling for 30 minutes, and then we'll drop the temperature down to 165 Fahrenheit or about 74 Celsius. Now I'm adding the hops. I have 20 grams of Citra, 15 grams of Chinook, and 15 grams of CTZ. This part is called the whirlpool, and you can think of this as step 2B because it's essentially an extension of the boil, but the lower temperature will result in more fruity flavors from the hops. Now, I'll let this hang out for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, it's time to chill this thing down and get ready for fermentation. I'm using a counterflow chiller for this step, but there are many other ways to cool your beer down, including an immersion chiller or just placing the kettle in a sink full of cold water. And now that we're cooling it down, it's super important for everything that touches the beer to be sanitized. Not just clean, but sanitized. And I recommend using an acid-based sanitizer like StarSan. 
Once it's down to room temperature, you can transfer to the fermenter, which can be as simple as a plastic bucket with a tight fitting lid and an airlock. Now that everything is cooled down and in the fermenter, it's time to add the yeast. For this beer, I'm going with Windsor from Lalamond, which is an English strain that's only capable of consuming simple sugars. Since we mashed at a pretty high temperature, I'm expecting this to end up at about 1% ABV, which is right in line with Keith's advice. The thing you have to watch out for is if you mix alcoholic beer with THC, uh, there is a crossover effect called uh, uh, you start it's it's fading cross fading mm. and uh, where you get buzzed and uh, slightly stoned at the same time and there are people who, who love that feeling but there are some people who who've never had that experience that before and it, it could be um, I don't know it could be scary it could be uh, uh, Caused anxiety, so I would say just be really careful if you're going to mix alcohol with cannabis because uh, doing so together um, again it's called cr uh, cross fading, and some people may start to get really dizzy and need to lay down, um, and, and others others just enjoy it and say, "Man, that was the best time ever." After a week of fermentation, it's time for the dry hop. First, I have 40 grams of strata hops, which smell like dank strawberries. And I'm pairing that with 10 grams of strawberries and cream cannabis flour from a local dispensary. This goes right into the fermenter and the purpose is purely to add more flavor and dimension to the beer. Since there's a little alcohol in there, we might get a tiny bit of extraction, but this really shouldn't add any THC to the final product. To dose our finished beer, we've got some options. After thinking it over, I decided it'd be easiest to make a tincture with cannabis concentrate and dose each individual glass of beer rather than dosing the whole batch at once. That way you can decide on your own how much THC is right for you at that moment. To make the tincture, we first need to decarboxylate or decarb the concentrate to activate the cannabinoids. To put it simply, we're going to heat it up to activate the THC. Do your best to spread it out on a non-stick silicon mat and pop it in the oven for 30 minutes at 230 Fahrenheit or 110 Celsius. After 30 minutes, cool it down in the freezer for a few minutes and it should look something like this. Now I'll pull it off the mat and pop it into a small glass jar and it's helpful if the jar has measurements on the side like this little mason jar. Now here's where you'll need to do some math. I have one gram of concentrate that is 69% THC. That's 0.69 grams or 690 milligrams of THC. If I dissolve that into 690 milliliters of grain alcohol, that would mean every milliliter contains one milligram of THC. But my target for each serving is about five milligrams and I don't want that much grain alcohol in my beer. Instead, we can add 69 milliliters of grain alcohol to get 10 milligrams of THC per milliliter and I'll just add 0.5 milliliters to each serving to get 5 milligrams of THC. Now, I'll just shake to dissolve and then let this hang out until it's time to try our finished beer.
All right, it's been just under two weeks since brew day and here it is. It's a golden straw yellow color with a short white head that shows this might need just a little more time conditioning before I call it perfect. Before dosing, it smells like dank fruit and citrus, but you really wouldn't know it has cannabis flower in it. Going in for a taste, it's light and fruity, and I think it works pretty well as a low ABV pale ale, but it does need a little more carbonation. Now let's shake things up and add half a milliliter of the tincture. Okay, right away, I can smell a huge difference. Much danker than it was before, but I'm still getting that fruit and citrus, and luckily, there's no sign of grain alcohol. The flavor follows suit, but I kinda like what it adds. It's like a funky, grassy strawberry and citrus, and again, no harsh alcohol notes. This is pretty cool, and I can see myself drinking it both ways. Huge thanks to Dr. Keith Via for the time and advice. Check out the link below to see the rest of the interview where he provides all kinds of helpful information and I highly recommend picking up a copy of Brewing with Cannabis. My name's Dan, this is Hobson Gnarly. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.